Hi, welcome to the 14th and final session of the Podopi course. Today we're going to learn about sensors and also how to use send and receive to communicate between components and scenes. In order to demo the sensors, I actually have to use my actual device and use QuickTime to stream what is happening in my device. So as I move, you can see that it's also moving my little dashboard here and has a little parallax effect on the circle and the background elements. We're going to need to import from the design sketch file and create a new pie import from sketch make sure to have 3x and import from the dashboard artboard in terms of sensors if you click on add trigger you're going to see a bunch of them the one that i'm going to show today is just tilt but you also have other sensors such as sound compass 3d touch and proximity so for tilt i'm going to select chart add a trigger tilt now it needs to know which axis so Y means left and right. So when you tilt your phone left and right, it's going to affect the response. I'm going to select chart and for the response, I'm going to simply move it. When you pair tilt with move, you get a range and the range is left and right. So the degree of the tilt, the higher the number, the more the user has to tilt the phone to affect either the X or the Y position of the layer. In this case, I want when the user tilt to the left completely to move roughly at this position. So minus 121. And when it's tilt to the right, it's going to be at position 16. So I'm going to input those values. So the first number is minus 121. And the second number is 16 and these two numbers affect the X position. For the Y position, I'm just gonna set to nothing. When you test your device, you have to open the Protopie app, and then once it's connected using USB, you click on play, and it should open the prototype. Right now, this is what I have, but the thing is when I default it, which means at degree zero, it's kind of centering my dashboard. And that's not what I want. So what I want to do here is to click on move and set when it's at degree zero, then set to position 16, which is what we have right here uh, as an initial setup. So I can do that. If I want to refresh, click play again, and then you're going to see by default, when the user hasn't tilt yet, it's going to set the position to 16. Next, I want to show you how to apply both the till Y and the till X. So both horizontally and vertically to different layers so that we can create a neat parallax effect. So let's select text first, add a move, set the degrees from minus 30 to zero. And for the X position, it's going to be minus five of the current position and plus five to the current position. So minus five, which is 11, and then 16 plus five, which is 21. Again, for the Y position, we can just delete it. Let's add a new tilt for the Y axis and select text again, add move. This time we're going to affect the Y. So minus 30 to zero degrees, delete the Y position. For the 24 is going to be minus five and then 24 plus five. Now you can see on your device when you tilt both left and right up and down, it affects both positionings of X and Y. Let's do the same for the dot. Move for the tilt Y set minus 30 to zero, delete the Y and simply do minus five and then plus five. Do the same for the dot for the tilt X set to zero. And this time it's going to be the Y position 
minus 5, and then 91 plus 5. Awesome. So now when you tilt up and down, left and right, you can see that all the layers are being affected, create this really nice parallax effect. The next technique I want to show you is how to send receive messages so that you can communicate between components. So we're going to select the chart and then right click convert to component. When you do that, any trigger related to those layers will be stored in the component. So now when I go to the component, you can see the tilt. Okay, I'm going to go back to the main scene and then selecting the chart I'm going to add a tap trigger and the response is going to be send. So what you can send is a message and that message can be used as a condition to set true or false. In this case we're gonna put tapped and we also need to set the channel. So I can set it so that it affects within this scene or I can affect a specific component and I can set it to chart one for example. With the send message setup I can just go to my component and then receive that message using a new trigger called received. Likewise you have to set the channel. In this case it has to be outside of the component and it's called tapped for the message. Basically, this trigger is going to verify if it's true or not that we receive a message called tapped outside this component. And if it's true, then it's going to run my responses. Okay, so I'm going to set my animation opening my layers. Starting with the dot, I'm going to set opacity and then text opacity and then chart opacity. For all of these three layers, I'm going to set the opacity to zero. Then I'm going to do some sequencing. So the dot is going to disappear first and then afterwards the text and then the background. So roughly at 0.4, it's going to be done with the animation. What I want to do here is to fade out these three layers and then send a message and then fade out the rest of the screen. So at the end of this animation, I'm going to add a send using a delay of 0.4. So when the animation is complete, I'm going to send a message call complete. The channel is going to be outside of the component and I'm gonna go back to scene one. Before moving on, we can just test what's happening here. Tapping this sends a message and then using that message from inside the component, I'm doing a sequence animation. And after the animation is over, I send a message that I'm going to receive now from scene one. To save time, I'm going to group these layers. So more toggle and the icon is going to be grouped together as container one. And then the rest, so the rest of the four transactions related layers is going to be grouped as container two using command G. Then I'm going to add a new trigger for receiving from a component called chart one and the message was complete. Now I can do the fade out animation. Let's select container one, opacity, container two, opacity, both of them setting to zero opacity. And then for container two, set a delay of 0.1. So now if I tap here, it does this sequence animation, starting with what is within the component, and then the top elements, and then the bottom elements. Since we don't like having a blocked experience, we're going to come back to the initial state of the screen by tapping on the background. So what I'm gonna do is create a rectangle at the very bottom, call that background, set to width 100%, height 100%, and 
and the background fill is going to be the same color. So I'm gonna paste the same hex value and then finally add a trigger for tab and select container one, add a reset response. Container two, add a reset response. Again, we can add using shift right arrow to add a bit of delay, so 0.1 and send a message to the component using send at a delay of 0.3 right here at the end of my animation. The message is going to say reset for the component called chart1 and now we can finish by going to chart1 create another receive from outside the component, this time the message is going to be reset. And then we're going to copy and paste these three opacity layers to receive and make sure to set the opacity to 100%. And we can just reverse our timeline animation right here. So the last one is going to be with delay zero and the first one is going to be at 0.2, so it should look like this. Now let's go back to scene one and test the final product. I'm going to click here. It hides everything using sequence animation. Click the background and it brings everything back. So we just learned how to use sensors, how to use send, receive, how to sequence animation in between, and how to do a bit of back and forth so that we can communicate between a scene and components. So that's all for my Protopy course. I hope you enjoyed this experience of learning how to prototype very advanced micro interactions using variables, using sensors, conditions, send receive, and a bunch of animation techniques that are very similar to how you would do it in code. At least from a trigger response perspective where you combine variables, formula, and conditions. I just want to point out that this course is free, so if you enjoyed the experience, feel free to share it to your friends. Again, thank you so much for spending the time to learn these techniques with me. I hope to see you in the next course. Bye-bye.